Good evening, everybody. Felt like the right thing to start with that song today in honor of the Newton North musical. <laughs> I've been playing Mamma Mia on repeat, I feel like. Um, so thank you all so much for coming and we're really glad you're here. I know that we sort of have a long night ahead, but um, it's gonna be really interesting, informative, and I think really helpful for you all. Um, before I go through sort of the logistics for tonight um, and turn the stage over to our speaker, I do just have a couple of quick announcements. Um, the first announcement uh, is just to let you all know, and the students should have received an email about this from the house office, but just that the teacher recommendation and comment process is starting um, next week, Monday. So what we plan to do with all of you, the students, um, the T-squared students in advisory next week, we're gonna walk you through the process of how to actually go through and request your teacher recommendations. Um, but one thing for you to think about this week and perhaps for you all to discuss in your breakout rooms tonight is what two teachers you would like to ask to write your teacher recommendations. Um, so just you know, some food for thought. Again, we'll talk about the whole process and logistics this coming Monday, um, but something to be thinking about. Then the other, only other reminder I have is just about our next evening meeting, which is gonna be Wednesday, May 18th at six o'clock at night. Um, and we actually are aiming to have this meeting in person. So fingers crossed, we're super excited about it. Um, and we certainly will continue to communicate, but if everybody could sort of plan to have it in person at this point, um, that would be great. And we are really excited and we'll serve dinner. Um, and it'll be the first time back in over two years, um, you know, for those of us in the T-squared program. So we're very excited about that. Um, between now and then, so between now and May 18th, um, it would be great if all mentees and mentors could plan to connect and have one meeting in between. Um, the majority of students have now had a meeting with the college and career counselor and should have a list of colleges in Naviance. Um, so the college research process and the list should, you know, that's really going and it's underway. Um, so that's also, you know, a great thing to discuss and sort of make a plan for that research. Um, okay, so I think now we are officially ready to turn um, the program over to Miss Rachel Masson, who's the Associate Director of First Year Recruitment at UMass Amherst. Ms. Masson is here for the next half an hour or so to present you information about the campus visit and interview. Uh, we know that we've talked a little bit about researching schools and the importance of visiting schools you're, that you're considering, um, but we thought hearing from an expert would be helpful. And we know you've all been on at least one tour, the group visit to Northeastern. Um, and for many of you, we know this is your only visit so far. So we thought it'd be helpful for Ms. Masson to discuss everything with you from how to set up a visit, what to expect during a college visit, uh, what different visit opportunities are available, what demonstrated interest is, why all this is important, what questions you should ask, um, and any other insight that Ms. Masson has. Um, so we're going to have her present until, you know, a little after six o'clock. Um, we do want you all to feel comfortable asking questions during the presentation. So I will be monitoring the chat. Um, so feel in the raise hand feature. So use either and we'll make sure that all your questions get answered. Um, at around 6.05 or so, we will then go into breakout rooms for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we actually are going to immediately end the Zoom at about 6.25. And the reason for that is because then you all have to jump on to the next part of the evening, which is our college admissions panel um, from 6.30 to 8. That will be moderated by yours truly, Ms. Garrity. <laughs> um, and Ms. Masson will be on that panel as well as, as in addition to three other college representatives. Um, okay, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Ms. Rachel Masson. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I, I uh, am so excited to share some information with you about the process. I have been in higher ed for going on uh, 20 years now. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to share with you uh, my experiences. I really would love for this to be a conversation. So please feel free to jump in with questions. I'm gonna take a, a few breaks. We don't have a ton of time, um, but I hope you walk away with uh, some confidence as you head in to this aspect of the college search process. Take a moment, pull up my screen here. 
there's always that that moment of transition, right? So let's talk about the uh, parts of the of the culture's process, including the visit and the interview. Let's first talk about. I can settle in here. I hope you all are settling in. There's a lot of information, but this is good stuff. Um, the first is to talk about the college search process in terms of why go. Right? It's a lot of effort and time. Uh, how does this play into your entire process of moving towards that enrollment at a college or university? Uh, it's so important to learn about the campus, to really decide if this is a place that you can visualize yourself. We actually know that uh, students, a predictor of success for students, the likelihood of graduation, um, is whether or not they feel at home on campus. And that's something that you as the student are the only person can who can decide that. Um, it really comes down to whether or not you feel at home there. Uh, and visiting campus is a really critical piece of that entire process. Once you're on campus, you're going to learn a lot, right? You're going to have the opportunity to not only hear about the school, but to actually move around and visit different locations on campus, whether that be classrooms, residence halls, dining commons, uh, support services for those of you who might learn differently. Uh, and we're going to talk about this in terms of both the in-person, but also virtual. Uh, and we have really develop some great programming around the virtual visit. So you're gonna have all of these important pieces. So colleges are gonna tell you about themselves. They're gonna introduce you to these spaces and they're gonna use this as an opportunity to expand on their story and give you that personal connection. You're gonna get an opportunity to meet and hear from not only students, but also faculty and staff members. So get a sense of what the culture is on campus. Again, ultimately helping you decide, is this a place I think that I could enroll? Is this the college for me? That is a, a big question to ask throughout the process. So when do you visit campus, right? You already went on one, you all are in your junior year. This is prime time. Uh, now, if you have younger brothers or sisters, it's totally okay to bring them along. The more comfortable you feel on campuses and the more comfortable you feel in that college environment, the more of an expert you're gonna be. And you're gonna feel uh, better able to say, to, to pass judgment. Remember, yes, we as admissions officers are going to read your applications and we're gonna decide whether or not to admit you, but you get the first choice. You get to decide whether or not this is a place you want to be. And you get to ask us, all the hard questions. You can ask us questions about retention, who, you know, how many students actually stay after their freshman year, um, graduation rates. In four years, how many students graduate? Um, what is the food like on campus? I happen to represent UMass Amherst that has number one dining in the United States, five years running. Had to slip that in there. You get to find out those tidbits of things that make us proud and things that perhaps you could feel proud to um, be a part of as well. We are actually really lucky that we live here in New England, uh, and there are lots of colleges and universities for us to experience, again, in person or vir virtual, to get a sense of what feels comfortable to you. Location, size, different opportunities. Is it something that's close by to home? Is it too close to home? Uh, I really like a large school. I want a smaller school. I want to be able to be a part of uh, the football team. I want to watch the football team because I'm not a D1 player. Whatever it is that's going to make you feel like this is a place you want to spend the next four to five years of your educational experience and being on campus is the best way to have that happen. It also helps you narrow down your choices, right? Well, uh, as you are looking to apply, applying is a big deal. Um, it's not a commitment. It's not a decision of where you want to attend. It's where you would like to consider attending. Uh, and the application process is time consuming, right? It takes you time. There's a lot of effort, a lot of emotional energy. It costs money if you're having to pay those uh, fees. So helping you narrow down which schools really are of, are of interest to you is a great thing in your junior year. Once you've decided that you think this is where I want to apply, and, um, and that may actually also happen in your senior year, um, many schools will hold fall visit days. Um, they're a little late in the process. You probably already started your applications, but it's another way to feel comfortable that you're making the right choice ultimately as you look at that school. And then once you've deposited, 
or sorry, once you've been accepted and it's time to consider depositing, that's another great time to visit a campus. And lots of schools will hold events for admitted students, admitted student days. It's our opportunity to further woo you uh, and to really uh, court you to consider depositing for us. What's great is that most colleges and universities respect the deposit deadline of May 1st. So as you're getting acceptances in uh, February, January, February, maybe into March, that's when those events are gonna happen. So you can visit and make those final selections based on schools that you know you've been accepted to. Uh, so this is all to say, you may visit more than once, and that is great. Uh, the more you can feel comfortable, the, the better. But again, don't overwhelm yourself, do focus in and uh, select those schools strategically. So there are a number of different types of visits that you are going to have offered to you. Um, certainly, COVID has really opened up a lot of options so that you don't have to visit in person, you can also visit virtually. And we are really good at them and we actually really enjoy them because it gives us an opportunity to interact with students that perhaps we wouldn't have otherwise. And there is so many different options for virtual visits. Everything from um, us coming to visit your school virtually to you coming and attending an information session, a virtual tour of campus. Uh, at UMass, we offer sessions that are just with our current students so you can talk directly to them. So these are live sessions that you are able to uh, register for and attend. That's how we provide you with the, the link. Uh, the virtual tours that are offered are often either live, so you uh, are interacting with students as they're showing you pictures and videos of campus, or there are recorded virtual tours as well that allow you to explore in many different ways and get a sense of what the campus is like. Recorded information sessions are ones that you can access at any time, uh, be that, you know, when you get home from school, in the evening with your families, uh, perhaps at two o'clock in the morning if you're having a little bit of insomnia. That's the great part about the virtual experience is it's so, um, it's so flexible um, and also it can be a little anonymous, right? You can go and attend these sessions without, um, you know, it, you could attend a lot of different sessions and really just try what feels good to you. In terms of in-person, on campus, there are also lots of options. Um, everything from a traditional information session where you go into a room and you sit down and we do a presentation uh, to a tour of campus. Um, sometimes those are put together. Other times they're separate. It really depends on the institution and honestly what you have time for. Uh, there are also maybe those visit day events that I was talking about. So for example, in the fall for students who are looking to apply uh, that fall or for the admitted students once they have been accepted to come to campus. So these are very big events where we pull out all the stops. Um, so for example, you might be able to have pictures with the school uh, mascot. The marching band may be there. Uh, faculty are going to be available. It's a much larger, typically day long event that is offered to students. There's fewer days available, so it is more restricted in that regard, whereas other types are offered throughout the year. If you're starting to get a sense that there's a lot to choose from, it really is true. You don't have to do it all, right? <laughs> Figure out what works best for you and your family. Now, what if you are interested in a school that's perhaps um, in the South or on the West Coast? Do you have to actually travel all the way out there for that in-person experience? And oftentimes the answer is no. A lot of times we offer regional events as well. So schools will come to Massachusetts. Uh, they may uh, offer a reception in a hotel or an opportunity to meet um, with an admissions counselor visit the websites uh, to find out more about those options. But don't feel as though the fact that you are looking at an out-of-state school limits your ability to interact with the schools in person. They often will have a representative in this area. Before you go to campus, and this is the last slide I've got for visiting, so we're gonna kind of ask questions about that, so you start thinking of things you want to go into it, is what, plan before you go or plug in, 
right? Either way, virtual or in-person, you need to plan these in advance. Unless you're doing just the recorded stuff, then that's great. But if you want to actually have a live session, it needs to be planned. Uh, and you need to pick a date, a date and a time visit our websites. Uh, we like to think they're easily navigated. If they're not, that's okay. We are people, we are here to answer your questions. Uh, you can call the visitor center, you can call the admissions office. You will be connected with a real person who can talk about your different options for visiting. And then make sure that you register, right? So that's where you provide your name, your year of interest. And I do mean the student, Right. Um, we oftentimes will see that perhaps maybe a parent will try and register. Um, we want to connect with you and we'll I'll talk a little bit more about this, but it actually benefits you to let us know who you are so that we know that you're interested in our university or college. Um, also, be prepared before you turn on the computer or you arrive on campus. Know what kind of questions are important to you and they're gonna vary and no one else can tell you what they are. We can make suggestions about things to think about, but ultimately you get to decide what is most important to you. Is it that you need a particular major? Is it that you are looking for a particular culture on campus? That you have a dietary restriction that you want to make sure is taken care of? That you want to live on campus? You don't want to live on campus? All of those things. But I encourage you to have a list in part to help you gather that information, but also so you can compare. Right? If you're asking schools the same questions, you're, it makes it easier when it's, you sit down to make that compare and contrast and keep track of all this information. You may think you'll remember all the details about us, or we'd like to think that you will because we'll stand out so much. But the reality is that it can become a blur, especially when you're talking one week, two weeks, two months, six months out from the last time you were on campus. So keep those notes so you can go back and jog your memory. What was important about the school that you liked, that you didn't like? Make sure you dress appropriately, right? Um, whoops, there's a little typo there. Dress is what I meant to say. So you dress appropriately for the, uh, for the, 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 the the visit that you look like you've taken this seriously. Uh, if you are on campus, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, you will be walking around. You're going to want to explore, um, and the heels would not be a great idea. So definitely think about that. Uh, if you're visiting virtually and interacting with us, turn on your camera. Um, it really will make an impression on us. Finally, my pro tip for you is to think carefully about your email address as you are registering. Uh, this is the first time that we are going to be capturing your data and you're going to want every interaction you had with the school to merge with your application, which should have an email address that you feel comfortable having us read, right? Um, these are real people. Uh, we are reading applications uh, and uh, we definitely take note of interesting emails uh, and that can be a positive or that can be a negative. Either way, it is your opportunity to put your best foot forward. Take a moment, look at it, consider what you want. Again, this is going to start your digital footprint or fingerprint for the college or university and can be so, so important. Are there any questions so far about visiting campus? All right, I'm gonna go on. I'll turn off the slideshow at the end and hopefully open up for questions. So let's talk a little bit about interviewing, all right? Um, now, first, the question that I always look at is whether or not an interview is actually required. Is it part of the application process? Is it optional or is it not even offered, right? So some schools will absolutely require an interview, uh, which means that you your application is not complete. It will not be considered unless you sit down and answer an interview question. And the interview questions are oftentimes geared to why you're interested in attending the university or college and why you're interested in that particular major as well as anything about yourself that you want to call attention to, uh, whether it be academics, extracurricular activities, aspects of you that you think would make you a good fit for that institution. Now, I often find that if the interview is optional, that it is actually uh, something that is desirable. So that if you are able to, you really should interview. It's one of those things where we say it's optional, but 
it can make a big impact. Uh, and so if you have the opportunity, you should. If it's not offered, it is truly not offered. Uh, and all schools will let you know what their different requirements are. Now, interestingly enough, UMass Amherst does not offer interviews, yet I get asked every year for an interview. <laughs> it's not that we don't talk to students, it's just that it's not gonna factor in to our decision process, right? You've got a lot on your plate, I've got a lot on my plate, don't add to it. If we're not requiring an interview, if we're not, I'm sorry, if we're not offering one, it's not something that you need to add to your to-do list. Again, you've got a lot going on in your senior year, and that's typically when these interviews happen. Another important thing to note is who is doing the interview, right? Who's conducting this interview? Uh, yes, it may be admission staff like myself. It could be a faculty member from the department that you're interested in enrolling at. Uh, it could be an alum. Um, that is oftentimes what I see when schools are interviewing, or uh, schools from out of state are interviewing in-state applicants, right? So if Massachusetts residents are interested in a California school, they may have an alum in the area that can sit down and meet with you. Whether you do that virtually or in person uh, is in large part up to you and the institution. I can tell you that, um, or I can say from my personal perspective and experience that there is that in this new era of using Zoom, we're all comfortable with it. So if you wanna do virtual, it's fine. In-person is not any better. It actually can be more challenging for the staff to uh, schedule. Uh, so, you know, think about that in terms of the impression you're making. But on the other hand, if you uh, interview in person, it's another opportunity to be on campus. Um, so there's no right or wrong here. Truly find out what makes sense for you. But do your homework before you apply. Know whether or not the application is required and build that into the timeline so that you're, when the application deadline arrives, you've completed that interview as part of the process. Um, so it's just something else to consider when you're looking at your plate, your to-do list, and what is feasible. Uh, again, this plays into the number of schools that you are applying to as, as well. Really make that a manageable number. Uh, really, it is uh, quality over quantity. Any questions about interviewing? That was a quick one, so you might not have had a chance yet. All right, we're gonna take a minute now to talk about demonstrated interest which is so, it, it's an interesting concept. But first off, what is it, right? Um, demonstrated interest is, are activities to show that you are really interested in the school, that you uh, have a, a small list, that you genuinely want to attend the school. Uh, it can factor into your uh, acceptance. And it can also factor into financial aid if it's measured. Not all schools measure it. Um, so for example, at UMass Amherst, we track your activities just so we know, so that we have a history of what you've done. Have you visited us? Have you um, sent us an email? Did you come virtually? Did you come in person? But it's not something that will be considered when we're looking at your application. Honestly, we keep track of it so we know what students like, we do more of what you guys like <laughs> and less of what's not of interest to you. It's that simple. Whereas other schools will factor it in uh, and they have different ways of measuring it, whether it's just that a student has shown that they're genuinely interested, whereas other schools will put different uh, values on different types of activities. So what activities are we talking about here, right? Uh, so we're definitely talking about that campus visit and being on campus. That would probably be one of the strongest ways to demonstrate your interest, right? The more effort you have to put into getting there, that is a higher indication of your interest. That's why a virtual visit is certainly genuine interest, it's demonstrated, but you could visit a lot of schools in one evening virtually. Uh, and so that's gonna be something that they take into consideration. It's a positive, it's just not as much um, a factor as a campus visit could be. Interviewing, if it's optional, by interviewing in an optional, situa op optional situation, you're showing that genuine interest. Email follow-up, a thank you letter, 
all of the uh, question, um, a status update as to how you're doing that semester once you've submitted your application. That all is tracked as well. Now, you might be wondering who measures demonstrated interest? How do I know? Just ask us. Honestly, in the admissions process, we are not, it's not a secret. Um, uh, you actually can Google UMass Amherst demonstrated interest and we'll tell you exactly what our uh, position is on it. And most schools are exactly the same way. You can call and talk to an institution. So you've kind of narrowed down your choices. You got an idea of where you want to apply. Now you can call them and ask them about demonstrated interest. So you can be more deliberate in those activities. The reality is though, if you are genuinely interested in schools, you should be doing all of these things. You should be visiting campus. You should be talking to students. You should be emailing us questions. We don't need thank you cards. We all think we do a fantastic job. Uh, <laughs> so you don't need to send that. Um, but if you have real questions, then definitely send those to us. That's the thing about the entire applications process is it's not so much being strategic and how you apply and making sure you're asking the right questions or saying the right things for us. Be you and be interested. This is an important process and we hope that we are engaging you just as much as you are engaging with us. Um, but all of these factors are, are important to know um, so that you can uh, best place yourself. So things that I like us to remember when we're talking about this. Again, I'm getting comfortable in my seat here. Um, so first off, do what you can right? Don't kick yourself for not having done enough. Don't second guess. Don't look back when it comes, you know, April, you have your decisions. Well, what if I had done X, Y, or Z? Don't do that to yourself. It's, it's not worth your time and effort. You are going to do the best you can. If you being here tonight indicates that you are going to do the best you can. Uh, listen to advice from individuals who matter um, and do as much as you can while balancing all the other things that we know you have going on in your life. Give yourself time, right? Starting now is a great place to begin. Think about these things over the summer. Make sure to keep your um, a, a calendar of when things are due, when different events are available, uh, and make sure that you're balancing things that they, you can be realistic uh, in terms of both attending to your academics and the number of schools that you wish to apply to. Start early, right? Um, but most importantly, start today. <laughs> Again, this goes back to do what you can and give yourself time. Don't kick yourself for having that started earlier. Today is the day. Um, uh, I like to refer to, a, a, there's a Buddhist saying that the time to plant a tree was 10 years ago or today. And so today you have the opportunity to put the, your right foot forward. Uh, and I'm so glad that you've included me in this process. Do ask questions. Um, ask questions of your guidance staff. Ask questions of me and my colleagues. Uh, we are actually, believe it or not, in the process of admitting students, not denying them. Uh, so we really want you to ask us questions and we will give you our honest answers. Um, if we say it depends, it means it really does depend, um, but we will try and clear up the mystery as best as possible. Also connect with other community-based organizations that are out there to help you as you are starting on this incredible journey. Uh, no one uh, gets there without some support and it, students have um, different types of supports already in place. Give yourself the best opportunity by finding the people that are going to make a difference for you. What you will not see on my list of asking questions is necessarily a friend's family of other people. Their experiences, while interesting, may not be the most informative. Um, if I were to give you advice based on my experience as an alumni at UMass from 20 years ago, not so much of a help. Uh, me today as an admissions professional, that is helpful. Um, so that's not to say that you can't talk to other folks about it, but don't feel as though you need to constantly seek advice or approval from outside individuals. Identify who your team is and who can get you successfully across the finish line and be sure to go back to them. You can't tire us out. We are here until the end of the process and happy to answer all of your questions. There we go. And so with that, I'm gonna end the slideshow. I know we're coming up 
on our time, but I am happy to answer any questions that might pop up. Rachel, it does look like there's one question in the chat that looks like a more of a UMass specific question, but would you mind answering it? I'm so happy to. Okay. I'll be brief too. Okay. Do you want me to read it aloud to you? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, it says, I've heard that if you apply directly into the business school at UMass and don't get in, then you can't get accepted for an alternate major. Is this true? And could you just, and could you answer the same question for the nursing program? Yes, I can. Can you get in for a secondary major? Right. Yes, absolutely. That's a very important question. Um, so the first answer is it depends. There are exceptions and certainly some students are admitted. So you have to apply to your intended major. You can also include an alternate major, which we will consider, but your information is basically is, is overall correct. Um, if you are applying to nursing or if you're applying to the Eisenberg School of Business, also computer information science and engineering kind of fall under that, um, you would need to make a very compelling argument for why you are equally interested in your alternative major. Otherwise, we find that students really just want nursing or they really just want Eisenberg School of Business. And both of those majors you cannot transfer to internally. Um, and so it is a, it's a disservice. What I encourage you to do is a, be true to yourself and apply to the major that really interests you. Uh, those two are competitive and, the, and selective. And by that, we mean we have far more qualified applicants than we do spaces available. Um, so it is a, a difficult process overall, but that was a really good question. I hope I was honest enough to provide some clarity. Yes, and we have another UMass specific question in the chat. Is there a separate application for the Honors College? There is not. Uh, so the uh, all applicants for first year are considered for uh, admissions to the Honors College as well. Uh, it is a 10% acceptance rate by major. So 10% of each major is invited to attend. What is interesting to note is that after one semester at UMass, as long as a student has a 3.4 GPA or higher, they can actually apply to be admitted to the Honors College. And that at that point, it's a 70% acceptance rate. So the majority of students who apply and graduate do so after they're on campus. Thank you. That's great. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really nice talking to everyone and you can find me online. Um, certainly, I will tell your uh, guys to feel free to share my email. I'm, I'm really happy to answer questions at any point. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, and we will let you jump off the Zoom because we'll give you a minute to regroup before our next jump on the next one. Yes, because we know you have a, a bit of talking to do in that as well. Um, so thank you very much. And we'll see you in like 20 minutes or so. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Bye bye. And for everybody else, what we're going to do now is give you 15 minutes or so to have some time in breakout rooms. Um, again, some potential things to discuss are who you would like to ask for your teacher recommendations and teacher comments. Um, you could discuss when you want to meet again before the next meeting, discuss college research, um, you know, whatever you all feel like you need. Um, and we will be in the big group in the, in the main room. So if you have questions for us, feel free to pop in as always. Um, and what we'll do also is we will, um, message out to the breakout rooms, the YouTube link for the college admissions panel that's starting right at 630. Um, and I also, you know what I'll do, I'll put it in the chat right now as well. Let's see. That's it. Um, so even if you probably what would be beneficial is if you click on the YouTube link that I just put in, um, and then that way it, it automatically pulls it up on your browser. So then when you sign off, you'll be able to jump right in. So everybody click on that link and I will email blast it again. I'm sorry, um, blast it out to the breakout rooms too. Um, and then I do see Eileen is asking about Rachel Masson's email. I do have that and I will put that in the chat as well. All right, any questions before we hit our breakout room?